Ready? Cash Color Cannabis is a high level of conversation on live hip hop daily TV. I have my guest in the building. Ah. Can you please introduce yourselves? Hey, you go. My name is, ooh, I don't have to lean in. My name is Tiana Long. Um, I'm originally from Oakland, California. Currently living in New Jersey. Okay. Um, Oakland. Oakland, Oakland, mm-hmm. California. I'm the founder of Medici Ventures, which mm-hmm. is a social impact enterprise, co founder of Synergy Sesh, overall lit AF. <laughs> um, yeah, that's me. It's true. <laughs> and, 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 She's right. And she, you really are. And who are you? My name is Shalee Sister Rogers. I, it's weird because like there's a mic here, but hello everyone. I'm Shalice Sister Rogers. True, we have people here. I'm from New York, mm-hmm. however, um, by way of Trinidad, and I am a youth pastor. I'm also the founder of Sister Rogers. It's a, a faith-based social enterprise. Yeah. Uh, we focus on uh, basically community organization, um, community organizing for cannabis enterprises, and then also for like any civic and social agencies, things like that. But I'm excited to get into this. All right, me too, me too. Because the first question I want to know is, how did you find your, how did both of you find your way into cannabis in the first place? Like, mm. was there actual a chance that you actually tried it before, or you just this was just something you was curious about? That's a very, I mean, how can I give y'all the short version? <laughs> um, I've grown up in Oakland. I've been around cannabis my whole life. Um, Wakanda. Uh, right, Wakanda <laughs> forever. Um, and so, I went to. I went to um, Oaksterdam, which is Cannabis University mm. out in uh, California, around <clears throat> 2012, uh, when Colorado was, you know, talking about legalization recreationally. I was like, okay, there's something happening here. I want to understand a little bit more. Um, but I was working in finance at the time, and it just didn't make sense. Mm. Um, I was doing a lot of community work. Um, like I said, I worked in finance and tech and. Uh, there came a there became a time when I was uh, working with my brother's keeper out in San Francisco, and I realized that there was just something wrong with the political system, right? Mm-hmm. The way that funds would flow from the government down into communities, yeah. something wasn't right. So I decided to go get my master's out in New York, and when I did that, I decided I'm going to cannabis full time because California had just legalized recreationally. Yes. And I knew that it was going to change the dynamics of just the way we live. And me being like a community organizer, community builder, I knew that underserved communities were going to suffer yeah. and I needed to understand more about like how these intersections worked. Yeah. And so in 2016, I dove into Canvas full time as I was you know, doing my master's program and really aligned everything that I was doing in that program with how cannabis was going to affect the world. That's what's up. How did you find it? Uh, mainly through a family member who was sick and then um, learning more about cannabis. Mm. After that, um, really started to going to like these meetups and events in 2017. So summer 2017 is when I really was like, okay, I'm really interested in this. There were all these different events, things like that. Yeah. Um, and then one event that was in Jersey City, um, mm-hmm. it was the first Latino or, yeah, it was yeah, the first- Latinx. Yeah, it was the first Latinx, Latinx. and then fully Spanish speaking um, cannabis event in New Jersey. And when I went there, I met Tiana for the first time. Yep. And here we are. That's what's up. That's so. That's how you two met. You actually met at an event. Mm-hmm. Yep. So at that event, you you decided. Well, how did you figure out that you, maybe y'all should you should actually go on and try to work together? Well, mm-hmm. so we we knew we knew a lot of people in the space because the cannabis industry on the East Coast is very very small. Yeah. And so uh, <laughs> it's not recreational. It's only medical in New York and New Jersey. And so. There's a movement happening right now on the East Coast with obviously legalization. Yes. Um, and so being in that community, we started working together just mm-hmm. because we had a, like a similar passion for mm-hmm. community development and and ensuring that people of color that look like ourselves are able to get into this space. Yes. And so it has kind of been like a year of us just being around each other and brainstorming and continuing to just be in this community. and. And our ideas really aligned with how we wanted to kind of go about this because we both yeah. do have our own companies, but you know, you're stronger together. And so we figured out 
Synergy Sesh. And, and speaking of Synergy Sesh, because I was able to be ble- to be part of the um, the inaugural yes. Synergy yes. Sesh. And, and it was brave of you to take it on during Essence Fest. Because, again, doing an event during an event is actually kind of hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you would think because there's people down there, people would just come. But that's not right. always the case. Right. Um, speak to us about, you know, just one, how the concept of Synergy Sesh came about. And what made you want to take it to Essence to kick it off? Mm-hmm. I feel like Synergy Sesh was mainly a brainstorm. We were having like a work sesh, Mm -hmm. a general work sesh, and then we just started going off. We were like, what about this? And what about this? And what if we do this? And then going and, also going off about like all the things that are going wrong. Right. And like who's not doing what right. right. Why things are this way. And then, mm-hmm. but we're solution driven. Right. So uh, we were like, you know, we want to bring people together and really talk about business. Talk mm-hmm. about, you know, what it's like to be an entrepreneur because people have this like glamorized idea right. of like being an entrepreneur. Oh, but, of course. But mm-hmm. don't want to really put the work in and so we really we really wanted people to like be armed with the tools to really take themselves their business you know to the next level when it comes to cannabis whether or not you want to go off and start your own business but if you're already working in the industry if you can be the one that really spurs the thought of getting your company to think about how cannabis is going to affect them Mm -hmm. and be the be the project manager of like whatever new departments become created Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like we we just wanted to help spur those ideas and help people really get to achieve whatever their dream was that's great cannabis and what really giving them that that base as well because we we're both very big on financial literacy Mm -hmm. so that's a huge component of our platform it's a huge component of our programs and even a lot of what we talk to you you heard like in the conversations that we were having talking about how it is to be a professional, yeah. a person of color within this space, mm-hmm. um, what is it like interacting with other persons of color within this space, and then just even just being a business person overall, yeah. like the child's tribulations and how we can be successful and, you know, keep your net. Yeah, net, keep net, your net, network net, popping. Net. Hey. Mm-hmm. Pop. It, what made y'all want to kick that off at Essence? Again, that's a, that's a huge undertaking. Like, what made you say, let's start it right now? Cause it's the black mecca. Right. Like, why not? <laughs> right. Why not? It definitely was. It definitely was, especially for um, for, for women and, and women entrepreneurs. It definitely mm-hmm. was that. You saw nothing but that down there this week. And then we also mm-hmm. felt like that's a great place where there's people from all over the United States that just come. Yeah. And um, it would give us an opportunity to meet those people so yeah. that when we continue to take Synergy Sesh to other cities, um, you know, hopefully we met them in New Orleans. Right. At Essence. Lit. Right. And then uh, as well, um, even as what Tiana was saying, as it being like a black mecca and just this this whole Wakanda situation. (laughs) Yeah. What I loved about our synergy session was that there was nothing people of color in that room. Yes. And that's the first cannabis networking event I've ever been to like that. Um, and that it just happened that way. Doesn't that speak volumes, though? Yeah. Doesn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> speak it does. volumes, man? Yeah. You know, I thought you know Marvin Washington spoke it correct. You know, I was there when he when he was. I was one of the seven. You know, mm-hmm. at, at MJ BizCon, Biz, yeah. like that's crazy to know that we're still that small of a of a group. But yeah. again, it was a great event that you, that 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 you had. And one thing I thought was important is um, we're speaking about people getting into the industry who might not have even touched the plant ever. Like that's a possibility. And I think mm-hmm. one thing that stops more people of color from getting involved is we still feel like if you don't do it, you can't be part of it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I think that's another stigma that still sticks upon us. Um, how important is it for you to, to express that to people that, you know, there's segments of, there's sectors in every in every, in every every area that you can actually transition and use your still, those same skills in cannabis? It's so important because I really want, like, it's really important to get people to think about, like, what is your passion? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I didn't wake up and like, oh, I want to grow weed. That's not what I grew up, you know, thinking, but if I wanted to, I could. But like, because for me, I know that people have so many different wants in life of what they want to do. And it doesn't, you don't have to touch, you just don't have to touch the plant. Mm -hmm. Um, And the more we start thinking about the ancillary parts of the business, that's just more opportunity that there is for people to get in, less competition, and really find your lane at this time where the industry is developing. Like, this has never happened in our lifetime where we're at the beginning the laying of a foundation of a whole industry of a whole legalized industry and so people need to understand the magnitude of that and understand the opportunities that are there so that they can 
chop chop. Yeah, and one thing you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss out. You know, I was recently speaking. I spoke with um, Naomi Granger. She's um, co-founder of Dope CFO. She's an accountant. You know, again, somebody who doesn't necessarily touch the plant. But what she did notice was there was a need to be filled. You know, and mm-hmm. I feel like we need to start looking more about that. Not something that you're attaching yourself necessarily to something you call a drug or you might think is is a negative, but you're feeling a need. You know, what I'm saying that's right. absolutely necessarily needed. So I think it's a a, a huge part of it is education for True. people. Yeah. Um, True. As a basis, because they think when they associate themselves with the cannabis industry, mm-hmm. they only think that they can be a dispensary owner mm-hmm. or a cultivator that part. or something that like part. that. And they don't realize that they don't have to go back to school. They don't need they can utilize the skills that they already have and basically transition into this industry. Yeah. The same thing as like Dope CFO was like, hey, there's a need here. Exactly. There's accountants that are needed within the space, especially people of color who are accountants. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do we utilize that network and utilize the other agencies and organizations that already exist with these professionals mm-hmm. and tell like basically kind of being an evangelist mm-hmm. for cannabis, like, hey, <laughs> you, this is a, a big opportunity. You guys need to transition yeah. over, not even need to, but consider it yeah. and educate yourselves and, and figure out if it's the right step for it's you. It's all about access and opportunity. Like, yeah. if, if people don't know what, what's possible, then how are they going to go achieve it? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if you don't want to touch the plant, you don't have to. If you do mm-hmm. want to touch the plant, we also want to give people the tools and the network to go do that as well yeah um, yeah it's needed it's needed it's yeah, definitely sure. needed so i'm glad that you are also just just setting that standard um i wanted to you know you said you, you said almost like preaching speak to me about being a youth pastor like how are you how is being a youth pastor does that ever clash with what you're trying to do here as far as um in the cannabis space like what you do as a youth pastor so i will bring it back to something that we touched on during synergy sesh is, okay. which is making sure that as people of color within this space we are very mindful of the way that we're represented mm-hmm. outwardly especially at these events where people are consuming and making sure that we are not looking like them yeah <laughs> um I, I feel like there's no like kind of way to say that and i'm i'm very much militant and like post mecca malcolm in my approach to life um post mecca but almost pre mecca malcolm <laughs> in some ways so when it comes to being a youth pastor, mm-hmm. when they appointed me to that role, um, I brought the the bishop and the leader of the church together, and I was like, "Hey, sit down. I need you. <laughs> I need you guys to know like what I do outside of this space." Um, and like, when I told them, they funny. they were it's like they already knew. It's like real quick. Let me talk right. to you about this. Right, and they're this. just like, "Yeah, you know, that's fine." And I'm like, "Well, this is why I believe on it, and this is you know, like this is where I see the community and the community that we're in because yeah. I I'm from East New York, Brooklyn, and my church is in Brownsville, Brooklyn. So yeah. shout out to Brownsville, East New York, Brooklyn. All now we 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 ain't clapping that. Yes, we <laughs> yes we are. Yes, or I'm here for that. Um, but that neighborhood is really rough and it's undergoing gentrification. Yep. And with that and this whole cannabis conversation happening in New York, it's really important that these churches who have really big congregations mm-hmm. engage in this conversation. Yep. They have the, the bigger their congregation, the more the, pol- the politicians start to listen to them. Of course. How hard of a sell is that, though? Oh, it wasn't to black churches, like honestly, because I oh, thought to myself, even, 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 yeah, exactly. Like, how hard of a yeah. sell is that? So there are a few. Um, I find that the bigger the congregation, especially when they have like a large uh, young adult and youth following, mm. they're more open to the idea because they already acknowledge that a majority of their mm. their okay. youth congregation utilizes cannabis yeah, in some way it, yeah. and that's why um a huge part of my platform is responsible consumption which is like an interfaith movement talking about like okay. jews who talk to okay. muslims who talk to like there's it, it spans across different religions yeah. different races and it's that inclusion part of it it's that part it's about you know i hate i hate always using the term normalizing people use it a lot but yeah. it's normalizing it it's making it feel like you know these are people who do this like i know right. this for a fact mm-hmm. you know you know what i'm saying yeah. like i know who comes mm-hmm. to the shows like people do stuff like that exactly yeah. so i was able to um on my birthday, I had a sermon, and after I went up for my sermon, I had like, these little one-to-one <laughs> TAC CBD creams. Stop it. Um, and ma- a that. large majority of my my church congregation are elderly women. Um, and mm-hmm. usually in churches, you see a lot of elderly women anyway. They yeah. have arthritis. They have joint pains. So that was my gift to the church. I, I blessed it. I asked the, um, the leader of the church to bless it, and we handed it out to them. And that just opened up the conversation for them in a different perspective. That's good. You know, I, I almost want to talk my mom. I see my mom's getting arthritis. Mm-hmm. I want to talk her into using like topicals and stuff, but I know yeah. she ain't with it. 
I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way. Maybe y'all can help me. I'm trying to figure out a way to be able to speak to an elderly black woman who I know is not with it. Like, how do I do this? You mm. you really got to just, like, explain it. Like, really mm-hmm. break it down. Give her mm. something to try. Mm. Like, yeah. like if it, it's going on your skin, like, if you're yeah. going to put Tell some Icy Hot on it, you right. might as well put some CBD cream on I was, it. I was thinking going and that. There's a mixture between those two, too. I was thinking going around a route of tricking her. You know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like mean, you say, like, saying it's Icy Hot. She'll question me, but, you know, my mom isn't going to, you know, we... She been past that part of questioning what I do all right. the time. You know what I mean? So, I feel like it's a, a part of education. Like, yeah, you want to. I want her to use it. I, I honestly do. I, I did that I to that. my she, mom, you but then really like, try harder. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I tried slipping into my mom. That did not work. Um, what worked was me saying like, "Hey, you're not going to get high from this." Like, because they have That's a very basic fear yeah. of like really being out of control. Definitely. And they're saying like, "You're not going to pop hot on any drug test or nothing like that." And I'm cool. You know, my mom. She knows what I do now. Like, I mean, for the longest, like, let me say for the longest she wasn't she was definitely anti weed and all yeah, that yeah. stuff man but she's growing to learn a little bit about the industry she still doesn't want to what she says partake in mm-hmm. uh-huh. you know but i'm thinking i'm trying to sell her on it she i'm watching her walk around now and i'm like i know this could help better than the stuff you're using i but mean they, it's only a matter of time before yeah. the doctors start you know it's prescribing it anyway yeah. right so but even as you're talking about that and saying like she has the stigma against it that's the same thing that we're facing with professionals you, yeah you know i call it it's a generational thing you know yeah, I mean? like like is. from my mother's generation to what I started believing in when it comes to cannabis to where my nephew is who's a freshman in college right now three different ways right. of looking mm-hmm. at it in the same house mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah. like and, and and that's a thing that we really got to get over as far as a people to even believe we can have some, some role in cannabis mm-hmm. that, right. that we got to get past the fact that you still got a grandma who don't think it's good you know right. what I mean and we don't even want to explain it right. we don't want to say it out loud you feel me like right. you don't want to say it out loud it's crazy because I, I see my parents with the canes and all yeah. that and I be like yo Right. Yes. Perfect. I ain't actually for no exactly. Reason. Right. Let me tell you. Nah, for real. You should be if right. my if my dad was alive, I could hear him saying, "I'm like, yo, Rudy, I need you just to try this." Oh, so you want me on heroin next? Oh, you know? no, <laughs> no. No. He to next exactly. Thing, he used to just jump to one next thing. Like, right. yo, he used to smoke. The he used to smoke on. He used to smoke on um, um, black and mild like cigars. Mm. And you ever ask him to stop smoking? Next thing you're gonna say is, so "What you want on cocaine next, huh?" Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's always some extreme. Like with right. black families, there's always extreme to the next <laughs> but then I, I realized that perhaps when it comes to more southern states mm. may, mainly a lot of patients may feel like they don't want to be stigmatized by their doctors yeah and saying that oh now you're a, a drug addict when i find that in the north it's a lot more liberal in that approach where they're just like okay we have another well problem. you know we the bible belt down here right. so again you know you right know. it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's a whole, bible it's just belt a whole different here. world and mm. Especially when it just comes to like the boomers and just older populations, um, there's there's a there's a, there's just a gap, mm-hmm. and you know I think millennials and the latter are really trying to figure out how to work with them because the older people are only getting older, mm-hmm. and we're gonna have to take care as a generation them. take care of mm-hmm. all of the issues that right. we have going on. The whole we're world. Have to take care of them. Yeah. And so we gotta get it together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are right. Um a hot button topic right now is inclusion. Mm-hmm. Um everybody's talking about it as a, you know, right now we're trying to figure out a way to get more people of color involved in this cannabis industry. Um what do you think is not working? That's that why are we not seeing more people of color get involved? Tokenism. Oh, okay. But then also, I am I am <laughs> seeing. Like, but then funny. also, I am seeing a lot of people of color. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. I really feel like no, we don't own the the massive grows. Yeah. We don't mm-hmm. own you know the the dispensary on Fifth Avenue yet. yet. Yeah. Um, but we out here, and we're definitely like in smaller numbers. Um, we don't get the publicity that you know everyone else does. Yeah. Um, except for on Cash Color Cannabis. Ah, right? so snuck that in. Um, hey, Millie Rock. But, hey. um, but I mean. Time, times are changing, yeah. and, and we, we definitely out here, and I mean, I think it's also a matter of, as people of color really coming together, like, this is the time where we need to be supporting each other's businesses, mm-hmm. putting each other on, and I, I see it happening, and yeah. so I can't even say that we're not here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a matter of 
doing business right and it's staying it's here. that part right. it's, it's that part and i agree with you it's not that we we're clearly here like i see enough people i know enough people who are involved it's just for some reason we're not counted when it comes it we just don't get counted you know what mm-hmm. i mean and i don't I, it's, that's hard for me to explain and hard for me to really wrap my head around mm-hmm. walking into a room like marvin washington said and, just, and being able to count the black people in mm-hmm. there knowing you're in the city that's, that's a black city mm-hmm. is weird as hell to me like how is right. it you couldn't out what kind of outreach was not happening that you couldn't get local people to come the they price, price. Yeah. Yeah. They priced it, these, like, these, what, these conferences are insane oh, amounts true. of money right. and they're doing it because it, they know that while still federally illegal they can yeah. they don't have these people don't have access to that information and they're just like okay how can we price this out the wazoo and yeah. then tell you something that you can basically learn from google yeah and you know what another thing you spoke about is is we need to actually start letting people know what's going on when it comes to publicity wise we need to let people know these groups exist like i just saw right there we need a, a single organization that addresses black people in cannabis specifically mm. there are many yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. like there are many organizations that do that like you know they're, they're in different areas you mm-hmm. got the mcba you got the mm-hmm. um minorities for medical marijuana you got groups mm-hmm. that are specifically targeting things that are that are that are plaguing us you know yeah. what i mean mm-hmm. we need to start making sure that we that we are telling people about these things mm-hmm. as well we could be our own publicity for the right, most part right. just by encouraging each other mm-hmm. and sharing each other's stuff absolutely and taking accountability and and really like i don't know it's for me it's just the time is now for us to really come together as a people and um do great things you know i had a chance recently to um speak with um entrepreneur about the lack of people of color in the cannabis industry and i i I often speak about you're not this you're never going to legalize inclusion you know what i mean like there's never going to be a law that you're ever going to pass that's going to force people to make you part of anything but the one thing you can do is take control of your voice you can take control of your image Mm -hmm. and i've i see too many times um like i was speaking even this weekend i'll see an image of that somebody who looks like me in handcuffs always in a drug mm-hmm. policy ad you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying where they're talking about why you need to change these laws mm-hmm. but you off you don't see me walk through that door and greet me in the same way you know what yeah, i mean right. you're still looking at me like why are you here right mm-hmm. we need to start controlling our image to the point where we are now not no longer looking like the constant criminal you right. know and like i mentioned in the story like we often see ourselves if we're in movies if we're in tv if we're in the media we are the person who is the the funny drug dealer or right. we're the person who's trying to hustle to feed our family mm-hmm. real quick we're never the sympathetic um person you know mm-hmm. what i mean like like mm-hmm. weeds that would have never been us you know right. what i'm saying like and i'm watching this and this is a big reason why we're not seeing us mm-hmm. um in, in your opinion what what role does media play in getting more people of color involved and what role do we need to start playing in controlling that media mm. it's Huge. I think the more that they start to have like um, different types or, or d- just more than the norm or the status quo of um, the types of characters that play of on, course, par- on TV and things like that, when you give us more depth, like. Um, but then also, who's taking these roles? Like, yeah. you right. read that script, be like, nah. Yeah. What was nah. the name of the. Um, uh, Dare White People that's on Netflix <laughs> yeah. the, the way that they go into each character now you have like more than just the ghetto black girl you yes. have someone who has gone through this and that yes, of like course. the more we yeah, have roles like that mm-hmm. that are uh that are open to us then and then having people who can actually play those roles and now we can start going into more deep character stories yeah. like this person who used to be a drug dealer and yeah. then change your life in some type of way yeah like, I, I i totally agree what we need is more people creating that yes, you know what i mean yes. and, 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 and what we need to do and i want to I, I i need to stress that to folks we need to stop waiting for that part to happen you know what yeah, i mean like as much ourselves. as you yeah as much as you didn't like disjointed you could have really not only made one but you could support one that you're seeing right no that absolutely part, that there, part. there was a big issue for control. me when I saw Grow House come out last year, now I knew I wasn't gonna be a fan of that. Like yeah. I knew, like there's no shot of Lil Duval. Duval, I love you. I saw you last week. You know what I'm saying? No <laughs> shot of Lil Duval. No shot. No shot to none of them. I just knew that movie wasn't gonna be good. Yeah. I didn't want to necessarily see it, but I thought to myself, I gotta support this in some way mm-hmm. because these are two brothers on screen who are about to launch a dispensary mm-hmm. in a movie. You know, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. No matter how they got to the weed, they about to do that part. Right. That needs to be seen. Right. It killed me that I didn't see more black people in cannabis promoting that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and it killed me that I didn't see them also and that's a knock on grow house you need to start also knowing that there are media outlets who look like me out here you right, know what yeah, i mean right, and start right. reaching out to us to help get these crowds out you i mean i went to the atlanta screening you know what i'm saying if right. they respect what i do you can respect it right you and, know what i mean that's a real thing and i think i think we're getting to a, a point where i think mainstream media is recognizing just how how powerful yeah. our voice is mm-hmm. yeah at um, this moment at this moment yeah. and 
you know, it took a long time to get there, but I think the more that we continue to put each other on, put ourselves mm-hmm. on, mm-hmm. And, and just go for what we want, rather mm-hmm. than waiting for someone else to catch our wave, um, we, wave. you got to create your own. And I do here. feel bad. That's no knock to Lil Duval. Do I fuck with you? <laughs> <laughs> I, knew just, I just knew I wasn't going to go see that movie. But, yeah. but, but uh, I hope everybody else didn't feel that way, too. But I just, <laughs> no. I just knew I wasn't. No. I knew I wasn't, but I was going to still support you in some way. But I do feel like media is a big is a big part. I think we need to really start feeling out a way to control more of that conversation versus waiting for a high time to, co- to co-sign you. We even do. like that whole um, hashtag successful stoner. Oh, yeah. Just even having that portrayed in media some, yes. in some ways, showing people who are active yeah. um, and who can get their, their job done, who can still go to work, who can yeah. still function, whether I think that's whatever. Us. And then and that Shout still goes into... Shout out to one Yes. <laughs> One on one stream, yes, I believe. Sir. Yes. Um, so just having that, and then uh, still talking about people's consumption methods. Yeah. Because then, how are you? It's it's weird for people to just be like, okay, I smoke, and then I'm I'm so I can function easily, and I can do X Y Z, whatever. However, that's different per person. One person can do that and another person probably can't. They will yeah. smoke and then go to sleep. So then we have to talk about the different areas and different ways to consume that, that are still responsible for, for our own personal lives. True, true. That's another and education. You know, most people just only think about smoking. Like, they just right. think that's the only way to really kind of consume weed. Microdose, that's another, something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. something. Because not everybody can, like smoke a joint or whatever it is and then still be functional right. no. so then breaking not necessarily breaking that stigma but just making people aware of that to begin with and being realistic about it and just now that there's so many options that you that we have access to well like speaking because i live in california it's a lot easier but um <laughs> that that option needs to be yeah like you, you know, go to down the street if you right, like it. Like, right. Uh, that's a light brag but there's there's just more <laughs> options out here these days and you know thank god to all the innovators and creatives who've been just whipping up all the tasty edibles. Um, <laughs> Let me tell you, Oakland has been been really making me proud, too. Yeah. Really making me proud, you man. Really clap back at everybody. Yeah. At everybody. Because <laughs> we ain't here for no, no bulls. Oakland came to, for it. They came for yeah. all the inclusion money. Yes. They came yeah. for everything, yes. man. Mm-hmm. They came for all the equity. I like but that. It's, but it's even crazy when, when we think about what these equity programs are doing because there's still loopholes out here. Yep. Like I need people to really be paying attention um, to these equity policies mm-hmm. and how big business is still getting through the door yes, and yeah. you know utilizing we'll get the utilizing mm-hmm. these yep. equity programs to make even more money. Yep. Um, they'll put the token, you know, person of color mm-hmm. on their contracts just so they can get, you know, an equity license. Mm-hmm. Like People need to be paying attention to who these companies are, who they're run yeah, by. Calling yeah. them out. Calling people out. Yeah. Like, you going to end up like Treatwell. Please believe. Please believe. Permit so, Patty. Yes. And Permit Patty. All <laughs> yes. of them. All of them. Yes. All of them. So, yeah. It's, re- it's real important yeah. that, you know, we're paying attention as legalization is developing, as, you know, cities across the country are putting in these equity bills mm-hmm. and, yeah. and revising them. Like, mm-hmm. the first one ain't going to be perfect, mm-hmm. but... Since legalization is coming, there needs to be something, but we need to continuously be paying attention to how things are developing, what's going right, yeah. what's going wrong, mm-hmm. where where are the loopholes, where do we close the gap, mm-hmm. what you know, it's a, it's a constant evolution, and we need to be doing our best as the cannabis industry to make sure that that is happening because we are the voice, we are the ones that want this to happen, and yeah. so if we want it to happen correctly, we need to be paying attention. Like, just because it gets legalized, that's not the end of the, yeah. that's not the end of the road. It's, it's not even close to the end of the road. And no. you know, sometimes I get nervous with legalization, mm-hmm. especially when I see the Trumps of the world and the John Boehner's of the world get involved. Man. That like, that bothers me, man, that, cre- that creeps me out. But that lets you know that sh- they flipping. Yeah, and it's right. weird, man. I, I just can't get out of those. And it brings the importance of uh, civic engagement mm-hmm. to the front over True. and over again. True. You can't just be the advocates who are advocating for things because not all advocates have True. the True, I agree. the well-being of the community in mm-hmm. mind. Right. Yeah. So it's on the community and the people within there that want to change, that don't want a dispensary dropped in the middle of their hood that part, to say something about I, it. I think that cannabis, more than anything, will create a conversation amongst um, black communities and Latino 
your communities mm -hmm. where you're going to start seeing people take more active roles Absolutely. In, right. in, like you say, civic duties and in politics and local politics more. There are people, again, like my mom, I, it loves me to death. I don't want them to spend some real Right. You know what you, I'm saying? You don't, like, have, a, right. you don't yeah. have a proper, like, grocery store. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have a proper She would school, say things like right. that. If, you, if your school system sucks mm -hmm. in your neighborhood, you are living a food desert. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't need a dispenser. Mm -mm. At all. Point mm -mm. blank, period. But they mm -mm. will try to put one there. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Like, they exactly. will zone your whole area. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and then and then kick you out once they start raising prices. Exactly. So, everybody stay woke out here. This, yeah. this cannabis conversation is actually should be a, a, a boom for the black community. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? When it comes Absolutely. to engaging. Engagement in actual be. conversations. I wouldn't see that. It, it, it can be. Yeah. It can be, and it should be. I find that it when I'm be. in, it yes, will it will and, be. And Synergy Session is going to help that. Yes. Yes. Synergy Session is going to help that definitely. Yes. Where do you see the brand going as far as over the over over time? Oh, it's going to be so great, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so great. We're like, <laughs> yeah, right? She's the evil lab. It's going to be so great. Um, so we have a lot coming up. Um, we have two more that we're doing mm -hmm. this year. But Synergy Session, so the one that we had in New Orleans was a part of our intimate networking, networking series. series. Okay. Um, and so that is going to be happening. Um, we'll, so we'll do the two this year, the other two this year, and then it'll happen over like two months next year because it's really a place for us to bring together entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that are really wanting to get going and like ready to start their start yes. their businesses okay. uh, start their projects and so we need the rest of the year to actually like work on like yeah. work okay. with these people you can't mm -hmm. you can't really do all of that work if you're throwing events every month right yeah. um <laughs> and then so we have the intimate networking series um we're going to be launching uh four to eight week courses for entrepreneurs okay. um, so we're online 2019. Okay. um we have retreats coming mm -hmm. uh yeah and then we're, we're going to be at different symposiums and seminars, and so there's there's a lot there's a lot. I see why they had the evil sesh. laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see why the evil laugh came. Right, um, and I think the because our our inaugural event was like an intimate networking mm -hmm. event that I think people kind of assume that that's what we are, but we are so much more than that, and we explained that. But it was a really cool concept, you know, like the way we all sat, mm -hmm. we just had that conversation. It was really cool. Yeah, like I'm, everyone I'm normally gets used tired to of you know a whole a panel, panel and, yeah. and then everyone talking just at talking at, yeah. at you. Like we need to have conversation because, mm -hmm. like, when I'm we think right. of networking, you need to be looking left and right, and who are the people that are in the grind with you right now that are ready to go? Same. And so you blow up you together. Need, like, hey. so we need to have these conversations, and people need to talk to one another right. to really figure out where do our commonalities lie, mm -hmm. and how can we build off of them, mm -hmm. and you know, create a, a bigger impact. Mm -hmm. And I think um, just. What Shalise and I have done is an extreme example of that. Yeah. We we do two different things, but yes. we found we found an intersection, mm -hmm. and Synergy Session was born. And yeah. so, you know, we want to create that same opportunity within this the space that we have. So. Yes. Synergy Sesh. Hashtag Synergy Sesh. Synergy Unlocked. Synergy Unlocked. Keep your network popping. Yes. That's what's up. So where, did, where are the um, next two are going to take place at? So, I mean, we want to keep it under right. wraps because right. we try to be like Beyonce and just right. be like, bam. Oh! Oh! oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> lemonade on y'all real I'm quick. Saying, we've been <laughs> operating like this for some time yeah. now. We just come out with the hot fire. That's flames. what's up. I, well, I, I ain't mad at y'all at all. <laughs> I had a blast at Synergy Sessions last week and I met a lot of great people. Um, I met yourselves. Yeah. Yes. And I, like I said, I just want to tell y'all how thankful I was for that. That was amazing. No, we definitely appreciated you, you coming to share your No problem. Experience. And the food was good. Yeah. Yes. Food was Popping. Yes. Shout out Treme to Treme Hideaway yes. in New Orleans. Yes. Um, Big they place. were fired. Patrice, Big place. Out of Treme Hideaway. Hideaway. Yes. It was a beautiful event. The space, the venue, our wow. little pop up photo area yeah. for people. That was all. That was great. But then shout out to Squad because we did that. Hey. Oh, she says out to Squad, squad man. Squad, 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 Squad. Look, look, look. Thank y'all for coming through today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you gotta move to the middle because we're here to interview you now. Like. Oh no, that's not how that's gonna work. <laughs> no, I'm, we wrap this up and then everybody kind of kicks in, gets to get a chance to I'm get to know it, you. I'm with it, I'm with but it. before we leave, let people know how they can connect with y'all online, um, how they can learn more about Synergy Sash, or how they can get a little more about y'all in case they have something they felt like they could add with add with the team. Mm -hmm. Can they be squad? Yes, yes. Um, so <laughs> you can find me at Tiana Long, mm -hmm. T I Y A N N A L O N G. 
Uh, you can also find me at www.mindingmydamnbusiness.com. That will take you straight to my it's website true. and all it's my true. business services. It really listed. is. It's a movement. It's a lifestyle. Yes, it's, a, it's a whole lifestyle. <laughs> a whole and I lifestyle. need everyone to get on the train, okay? Mm-hmm. Everybody. Mind your business. Mind your business. Um, <laughs> so if you go to www.mindingmydamnbusiness.com, that'll take you to all my business stuff. Um, and then Tian Wong. <laughs> yes. I am Sister Rogers on all social media platforms. Um, S I S T A H, so spell the black way. Show is. Show um, is and R O G E R S. Do not add a D in there because we don't we don't <laughs> get these hands. We get these hands real quick. Mind your damn business. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, thank y'all very much for coming out. Thank that you. is Cash Color Canvas Podcast, a high level of conversation. Um, next week, I got my man Judge coming through from New Era Atlanta. We're gonna talk about some real pro black in the community type stuff here yes. with him, man. I love I love Ligety, Judge. Ligety black. Yeah, I love when Judge come through. So um, thank y'all everybody. Um, definitely subscribe to the Cash Color Canvas Podcast on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, all major streaming platforms, and get the live hip hop daily app so you can watch us live. Not 9 p.m. every Tuesday on LiveHipHopDaily.tv. That's Cash Color Cannabis, a higher level of conversation. Yay! Thank you. Hey, y'all, uh, for everybody who's this is your first time, this is Live Hip Hop Daily Studios. <laughs> this is where we film the Cash Color Canvas podcast every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Um, thank you everybody who has subscribed to Live Hip Hop Daily on Demand, everybody who watches us on LiveHipHopDaily.tv, everybody who subscribes to us on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and all that. It's because of you we are here at 100 episodes. Man, um, since we kicked the show off last January, we've had a slew of amazing people come through these doors. Everybody from mayoral candidates, to entrepreneurs, to rappers, actors, directors, producers, the list goes on. We've had an amazing group of people come through and, and entertain our 420 friendly audience every Tuesday with, with, with great stories um, and great and just great vibes, man. And that's one of the pr- things we pride ourselves on with Cash Color Cannabis, that we create an environment that, that allows for a higher level of conversation, whether we're talking about uh, cannabis topics or we're just talking about life. We feel like we have a chance to open up doors and give people a creative space and a creative place where we can just open up and have conversation. The last hundred episodes were dope, and trust me, the next hundred episodes are going to be even more amazing. We're going to bring you another level of dope interviewees, and we're going to bring you a higher level of conversation. So thank you for checking out the show every Tuesday. Thank you for streaming the show on Apple Podcasts and on Google Play and iHeartRadio. And just thank you for being a supporter of Cash Color Cannabis. And as usual, it's cash color cannabis. It's a high level of conversation. Alone come through, spark it up. Dinner time hustle, I'm starving, bruh. Marathon nip like sloss and cuz. Congratulations to Cash Color Cannabis on their 100th episode. I can't wait for the next 100. Thanks for keeping us hip to cannabis policy, business, advocacy, and most importantly, the culture. Peace. So we have to figure out other things to say nappy roots and have fun. Yeah. If I didn't do shit but rap, I'd probably never see this guy as much as I do when I make beer and we talk about podcasts. And we go on the road and do shows. Yeah. Oh, hey. Didn't see you over there. Just wanted to take a uh, few seconds. I probably have about 45 left to uh, say congratulations to Cash Color Cannabis on their 100th episode. You know... I probably did a couple of things a hundred times, brush my teeth consecutively, wash my face.